بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد زبوا عائشة welcome to a new session of the creed series part three so I'm in Dubai right now and I did part two one and two from Abu Dhabi Today we are going to get started with part 4. Uh, please remember that for both the creed and methodology session, knowing the author and the book is of extreme importance. And so I highly recommend that you go out and you strive, struggle and search for 1mm Go to speakers.com or Twitter and 1mm. Uh, and have a look at, uh, sorry, uh, the, we are reading from the, the three fundamental principles and their evidences. Uh, which is widely known as Usul Usulasa the three fundamental principles. So it is imperative that you know about uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab because even recently someone was asking me and it is strange that most of the people, especially from India and Pakistan, they are 40, 60 years old and they don't know who is Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. So that's wallahi, that's a great tragedy. That's a great tragedy because not knowing, okay, you, may, you might not be knowing every other scholar, right? A normal scholar, every other scholar, but how can you not know the legend of Islam? One of the recent legends of Islam of our time Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab all the khair that you see in uh, Mamlakat al arabiya Saudiya and in the land of Tawheed Daru Tawheed uh, the land of the prophets uh, Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia as you know it all the khair that you see believe it or not is Allah by Allah's tawfiq Allah sends one man called Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab whom Allah guided and gave tawfiq to revive the sahih the authentic the raw form of Islam in Saudi Arabia otherwise it was doomed it was like all uh, submerged in shirk and, and bid'ah so just have a look go back 200 years Go back in books of history and or maybe go and ask your ancestors, your great ancestors, if any of them are alive, your great great grandfather, your great great grandmother or your great grandmother, you know, or your grandmother, if any of them happen to be alive. Uh, maybe they have, you know, 100 or more years of age, they are alive, your grandparents. Just ask them if they happen to visit Saudi Arabia, how was Saudi Arabia like, what was happening over there, they will tell you, okay. That's one way of doing it and the other way is the through the books and the third way is through, the, the best way is to go to the scholars go to the senior scholars of our time like Sheikh Muhammad Sheikh, uh, Sheikh uh, Saleh Al-Fawzan uh, Hafizullah in uh, Riyadh or uh, Sheikh Abdul Mahsin Al-Abad Al-Badr in uh, Medina the Muhaddis of Medina go to either of them and ask them how, how was the case some 200 years ago because they didn't great grandparents were alive you know if you ask Sheikh Fozan and 
so you know their grandparents were alive 200 years ago so they can tell you what was going on so and they are the most fearful the scholars are the most fearful the most authentic and the right people to ask such questions not the news not youtube channels news channels they don't know anything they are just random people a bunch of kids you know or serial journalists making these channels these videos you know but they are not every one of them not every youtube channel is run by a scholar or a talib al ilm a person of knowledge okay so be mindful of this be careful of this whenever you are starting to read a book a new series in islam first of all get to know the author who the author was get to know everything about sheikh muhammad bin abdul wahab when he when was he born when, when did he die what did he do all his life where did he seek knowledge and you know uh, i lived in dir'iya near wadi hanifa that place which is associated with him and uh, so alhamdulillah you know not only i read about sheikh muhammad al wahhab from books but i learned about him from scholars and also i happened to live most of my life in saudi arabia some 27 years and in the last decade i happened to investigate about him from the people living there some of them 60 plus and who are regularly coming to the masajid so i asked him how is this place dir'iya and wadi hanifa and uh, especially dir'iya how is this place uh, been last uh, 100 200 years you know because he he was a long long resident there this is with his uh, seven ancestors living there so so alhamdulillah this is the way you get real facts and figures and you learn knowledge not qila uh, wa and useless discussions of people and useless channels online anyhow let's get to as I told you multiple times, the purpose of the this live sessions of mine is not uh, like a sheikh to teach you a book or even like a senior student of knowledge. That's not the point. For that, the ulama, their recordings are already there. Their uh, lectures are there. Their books are there. Okay. So it's upon you to go to the scholars and study the books with them. But the whole point is just a reminder sharing with you the little that i've learned and just a reminder about the key points the most important points the fundamental points that you need to know islamically okay and instead of wasting your time on tiktok and youtube which is what most people do uh, and instagram on the weekends and just uh, you know binging through the through netflix and through these useless uh, videos it is better that you come live you come online you come live every i mean you join my live session every weekend on the sunday 2 pm and uh, you know you, you make whole of your family sit and learn and watch the session this short reminder short session and then later on you open up these books and you get these books and you open the recordings of the people of knowledge and you study them and then you discuss between yourselves you know so as a family as a parents as parents and kids you study with each another and you teach each another you discuss with each another and if you have any questions then you go to the scholars and you ask those questions so the whole point of these sessions is just to raise awareness and remind you that's it but don't think this will suffice you as the main thus the main session it will not because i'm not going into details i don't have 
the knowledge and time to get into details okay so today's fundamental point and also the salasa is knowledge precedes statements and actions so this is like a quiz i did like uh, possibly two weeks ago a month ago that what comes first i asked i gave three points what comes first faith or knowledge or action what comes first and i did this like kind of like a poll or quiz in multiple groups on facebook and whatsapp and subhanallah was majority of the people chose gave the wrong answer they said they said faith comes first you know so this is just uh, a emotional reply it's not a knowledge based reply okay remember the scholars and people of knowledge give knowledge based replies and they have research based approach data based approach and knowledge based replies whereas normal people common people will always give you emotional replies common uh, you know common knowledge replies general knowledge replies and most of the people today these days they don't they don't they know nothing but conjecture you know so very very few people actually have knowledge and the right understanding about islam okay so today's point is very important i'm going to tell you what is the right order of these three things okay so the fourth point is knowledge precedes statements and actions وقال البخاري رحمه الله تعالى باب العلم قبل القول والعمل والدليل قوله تعالى فاعلم انه لا اله الا الله واستغفر لذنبك فبدا بعلم قبل القول والعمل ان البخاري may Allah the exalted have mercy on him said chapter knowledge precedes actions knowledge precedes statements and actions the proof is his statement exalted is he so have knowledge so have knowledge o muhammad that there is no deity so have knowledge o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that there is no one worthy of worship other than allah and seek forgiveness for your sin he so this is uh, chapter 47 this is surah muhammad verse 19 he began with knowledge before mentioning statements or actions so this is well known you study any book of aqida whether you study usul as-salas aqwaid arba usul as-sitta كتاب توحيد كشف الشبهات عقيدة تتحاوي عقيدة الواسطية عقيدة الهمامية and whatever um, there is a شرح uh, أصول السنة you know whatever book you study of عقيدة with the scholars عقيدة is the basic creed the basic belief system of Islam whatever book you study the first principle the the scholars will teach you after what knowledge is what knowledge is and who to seek knowledge from the the third thing that they will teach you that in terms of what why you have to seek knowledge you know why you have to seek knowledge first why knowledge is important why not jump directly to statements and actions it's because imam bukhari who is the author of sahih bukhari and it took him some 16 plus years to compile sahih bukhari which today people don't read and take it for granted subhanallah and without sahih bukhari you cannot understand the quran and tafsir remember that so it's always quran and sunnah so Imam Bukhari he named a chapter name as Bab al-Ilm qabl al-Qawl wal-Amal yani knowledge precedes statements and actions 
and he gave the dalil for this because when he is talking about something islamically remember any scholar is talking giving you something telling you what to do what not to do he has to give you dalil without dalil you cannot establish this religion this religion al islam is tawqifi it is mabni mabni ala al dalil dalil is lazim dalil is wajib the alim has have to give you the alim have to give you dalil if he can't give you the dalil then he cannot be an alim okay he has to give you dalil and only once you give once he gives you the dalil is when you are obliged to follow that as your deen then it is your deen it is your religion because the dalil has been given to you by a person of knowledge an alim so what is the dalil the verse in quran the noble quran fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah sorry fa'lam you should never say ha you should have to say who fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah wastaghfir li dhanbik okay for why it should be who and not ha you have to follow our upcoming arabic language series okay join our arabic language program and learn the arabic language series learn arabic with shuai all right so send a message on abu aisha shuai vlogs and register and then you can get started with your arabic language journey remember it's a journey you cannot learn arabic in just one video in just one class overnight it will take you take you 2 to 7 years to master arabic language pretty much your whole life so it requires sincere commitment dedication just like anything else okay and it's very important uh, my my grandfather's younger brother you know he asked me once a question that la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah so why you have even in the, he asked me why you have even in the kalima in the in the azan ashhadu la ilaha illallah and he was asking me about these you know uh what you call the zamail why there is ha and he and who and i so this is like you know subhanallah many one many people wonder well, how do you know in arabic language when you have to say ha when you have to say he when you have to say who so for this you need to learn the ism and zamail and is some fail half the differences and and how uh, you know the zamair system works basics of uh, arabic language you need to learn know the basics of arabic language to understand this concept but there is clearly a reason behind every damma fatha kasra you know so you have to learn the arabic grammar and it's not that hard if you can learn english grammar urdu grammar then you can learn arabic grammar it's just a matter of studying it and then practicing it regularly okay so okay so the correct order is first of all comes knowledge then comes statements and actions so first it will be knowledge then faith then actions it will be like this the order knowledge faith actions okay because imagine like even the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but allah is telling him know that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth other than allah 
So even for the final messenger, Ali Salatu Salam, the first thing that Allah is teaching is Tawheed. Tawheed al ibadah or Tawheed al uluhiyah Tawheed always comes first, you know. And Tawheed is more important as Muslim reverts, you should know. Tawheed is more important for you to learn than the Arabic language itself. Yes, ultimately, and in the long term, if you keep striving, you will learn the Arabic language. But the core purpose of becoming a revert, a Muslim, accepting Islam is first of all, you have to learn the fundamentals of creed, which is Aqeedah. All right. So that's it for this session. And uh, I hope that you follow up with Abu Ismail and uh, Abu Talha Dawood Burbank and all other recordings that I mentioned for each of these points for details. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdik, ashadu Allah, ilaha illa astaghfirullah, wa alaikum wa rahmatullah.